Filming in progress. Hi, welcome to my introduction to copy play calligraphy part number five. So today I'm going to do a few more words following the last video I did creating uh, words in copy play. I'm gonna be using my hand 101. I'm a right-hander, so I'm using an oblique holder, but you can also use a straight holder. Most right-handers will use an oblique, but it doesn't mean that everyone is the same. So you will find uh, a few calligraphers actually using the straight holder being a right-hander as well. I'm using walnut ink. And in here, I have my guidelines. Um, if you go to my Instagram account and follow the link of my bio, you will find um, a link that takes you to a folder called Calligraphy Guide Sheets with a blank calligraphy um, uh, guidelines for different calligraphy styles. So this is one that I'm using. I think the one on my Instagram account might be portrait, but it's based on the same way sheet. So I'm going to secure the page. Then I'm going to start. As I did on my last um, video, number four, I'm going to be using a ballpoint pen and I'm going to use also the um, pointed pen. So I have chosen a few more words that are combining the letters I have explained during the videos, part number one, two, and three. I'm gonna go a little bit closer now and I'm gonna start with the first word. And I'm going to be using the ballpoint pen, first of all. And then we are going to go into the fill and fix. So let me see if I can change the position, because I have a strong light today. So there is a bit of like um, shadow. OK, so the first word I'm going to be doing today, it's, um, it's called tint. So I'm going to start with letter T. And I'm going to, let's go in here. Okay, so as always, where am I sitting on this guideline before you start? So I have the X height and I have the short ascender area and the long ascender area. And then I have the short descender and the long descender area, okay? So for the first word, which is tint, I'm going to use the short ascender area. And then underturn and overturn, letter N, second letter T, down, exit. And then in here, we can choose if we want to have um, Let's do both options. If I want to have a really wavy crossbar, which might be too much because I have two T's next to each other, but that's also an option. If this is the style I'm going with at the moment, that means that the dot of the eye, the tittle, is going to be all the way up there. So the same height as the ascender for letter T. Let's go a little bit closer now. All right. Now, things I'm looking in here are obviously um, the thin and fix. Obviously, in here, there is no contrast. So the up stroke and the down stroke are meeting in the middle of the X height for all the letter forms. So you see how I'm creating this negative space, negative space, negative space. And again, in here, negative space with the letter T. So that creates rhythm. And the next thing I have to be looking at is that the spaces between each letter and inside the letter forms are very similar. Let me use a different color. Um, so the counter space, which is the space inside the N, is very similar to the space between the letters. Okay, so you see the pattern. 
Now the things, uh, the space that is gonna be a little bit different is the space in this section in here. Because we have a, a line dividing the space in half. So this space is going to be a slightly bigger, but slightly, only a slightly bigger. Okay, now let's reproduce the same thing with the thin and thick and see where we start to create the letter form. Um, some of you might uh, write uh, quicker, but I have definitely, um, I have a very slow writing because I'm looking for precision. So definitely I'm moving really slow. Okay, thank you. So I'm starting on the base of the X hat and I'm going up, see? one millimeter to the right to make sure the top of the T is flat and then press and follow the 55 degrees line. Same movement, one millimeter to the right, pressure and under turn and over turn. So we have the double turn in this section. Now, I have to look at the spacing. So you see the negative spaces I was marking in red. Now I have a problem in here because this space is much bigger than this space. Okay, so these are the things that we need to be looking at. Now let's keep going. Um, reference point, half of uh, the space is inside the X height and I'm going out, here V down, second T, down, exit, and I run out of space. Um, I run out of ink. All right, so uh, option number two, if we want to just do a straight line for the bars of the T. Okay, so things are going on in here is I have to pay attention because the reference point it's not the same on the T, okay? So I have to be like mindful of that. Now I have to be looking at this area and then this area and then this area and then this area as well, because that exit should be on the 55 degree angle as well. And that I'm creating a pattern. And in this area that I have the under and the overturn, it's going to be slightly bigger. Okay, now let's do it again. All right, so thin up, millimeter to the right and down. Thin and one millimeter down, under turn, over turn, down. 55 degrees, down, and from here, follow the 55 degrees, and down, and exit. And this time, maybe we want to add a little bit of some curvy movement. All right, in this case, the dot of the eye, the tittle, is much higher because we have this crossbar in the middle. To be honest, I don't think I would go with this option because it feels too much going on. So I prefer that um, crossbar that is only straight. Okay, so in here now, I have the thin and fixed in a better position. So I think it works much better. Now the next word is wool. So let's start with the bottom thing. Um, I'm on the base of the X height and I'm going up. First turn, 55 degrees and up. So we have a V shape. From here, I'm going down again and the second turn and loop. And now I'm exiting the, um, the W more or less in the center of the X height and stop in the middle. I'm allocating a space for my oval and at two o'clock, I'm going up and down, joining the letters loop again. 
Again, I'm exiting in the middle of the exercise, holding hands, ligature to letter U. And now I have an underturn and an overturn, letter N. Stop again, because we have another oval shape. Two o'clock, I'm going up and down, holding hands, ligature. And the D is as tall as my T and exit. Okay, so this is the structure of our work. And in here, we have to be looking at all of these areas. The space inside informs the space in between. And here the same. And here the same. And here a little bit bigger, so not the same. Um, and then where I stopped. So with this movement, it's very easy to stop up here. And then I will create the loop and go outside and definitely stop there. I create the O all the way up. If I want to, I can stop in here. And then if I want to, I can stop again in there. And then all the movement down, I can stop in here all the way up. I will stop in the middle of the X height and then you don't need to stop in all these points, but these are possible places where you can stop because the movement, it's going to make you, um, it is easy to make a stop and then go back and keep going without being very obvious. Uh, if you need ink, I always recommend to go grab some ink and come back before the downstroke. So always on the, um, on the uh, top movements. So on the upper stroke movement, once you finish the upper stroke, stop, get the ink, and then go into the down stroke. Um, okay, let's go and repeat the same with the thin fix. Okay, so on the baseline of the X height, really thin, upper stroke, and first turn, down, following the 55 degrees, and up, V shape. So if I'm, once I'm in here, as you see, I can stop. I can go one millimeter to the right and then down. Second arch, push against the paper, exit in the middle of the X height, stop. I allocate the space for my oval shape and then two o'clock, up, round, holding hands, ligature, going up, and then the loop inside the O happens inside, so the contour is clean. And then again, middle of the X height, going up, one millimeter to the right, with a U. Second part of the U, over there. Oh, too much ink. Then up. Center of the X height, the space to allocate the oval all the way up and pressure and exit. All right, so I have to be mindful of the angle. And in here, I can see that this N is going outside of the 55 degree. So I have to be mindful in here, okay? Next one. Um, the next word is pun, P-U-N. And let's try a few different P's. So the first P I'm going to do, let's mark the area. This is my X height. The first P I'm going to do is a little bit taller than the top of the X height. So I'm going up like a T, but the stop halfway. Okay, so if I was going to do a T, I would be going up to the shorter center line, which is this one. 
but with the P, I'm just stopping in the middle. And then from here, I'm going down. And the area that I'm reaching here is the short descender line. Okay, once I'm in this position, I'm doing the movement of a letter N. So from the baseline, I'm going up and can we all the way up for my letter U. Second part of the U and under turn and double and over turn and and places that you can easily stop. Um, I will definitely stop here and then I create the movement. And if you want to stop, you have this place to go outside one millimeter and down and then next stop, and then here and there. Okay, that's possible areas that you can stop and then join the letter forms to control the movements. So I'll repeat the same with the ceiling fix. So starting on the base of the X height and I'm going up only till the middle between the headline and the shoulder center line and now follow the 55 degrees and down. Now I go back to the base of the X height and the thin stroke goes away roughly in the center up and flat top for the letter U, second flat top for the letter U, and double turn. And from here, the thing goes away from the thick roughly in the middle, 55 degrees and exit. And again, I have to look at these areas like a pattern that I'm creating between the thin and the fix. Let's do one more word, this time using oval shapes. So the next one that I'm doing is coconut. Um, okay, for letter O's and C's, I explained earlier on that if this is my ellipse or oval shape. And we look at this oval shape as if it was a clock. We will identify that this is 12 o'clock, this is six o'clock, three and nine. And different calligraphers start oval shapes in different places. Um, could be at 12, could be also at 11, um, some letter form will start from the bottom or from up. I start more or less at two o'clock. So that's my starting point and different calligraphies will start the ovals in different positions, okay? So this is my personal uh, way of creating these ovals at the moment. So to start with let, uh, letter C, exactly the same as letter O, this is the starting point. So I'm going up, I'm going around, obviously applying pressure on the down stroke, and then I'm going to open up the arm and leave this oval open because this is a letter C, and not a letter O. So the difference between C's and O's is that the C is an open oval and the O is a closed, enclosed oval. So let's go with this. Okay, so this is a lot bigger. Uh, now I'm going back smaller because I'm here inside the X height. So two o'clock, going up and around. Push, thin, open up, stop. Now I stop in the center of the X height because I'm going to allocate the space for my next oval shape, which is a letter O. Two o'clock. Going up, around, push, closing, oval inside again. Open the arm in the center of the X height, stop. Again, I allocate the space again for the second C. 
two o'clock, up, down, exit. And in here, I need to join the Again, second on two o'clock, down, close. All right, I can already see stuff going on in here. So the things I can see are not so clear because now it's better because of the lighting. This C is a lot wider than the O next to it. Uh, this C is completely off this slant, So I have to be careful in here as well. Um, this is correct, okay? But I can see the difference between the angles of the letter forms. So let's go again. It's good to do self-examination and evaluation because that's how we are going to improve the writing. I can add an entry stroke as well. So entry stroke in the center of the X high and now push and open the arm. Allocate the space and let it go. Close the oval. Open the arm. Second letter C. Exit. Second letter O. Close. Now from here, letter N. Letter U. What you don't want uh, to happen in this case, and this is a very big exaggeration, but what you don't want to obtain in these areas are like really wide oval shapes. All right, so this is where I would call, we have an alphabet made out of um, oranges. And then here we have an alphabet made out of bananas. Okay, and these two don't belong to the same alphabet. They don't belong to the same family. Um, so we have to be careful or in looking at these different shapes of letters. And although, yes, some of them are uh, ovals and some of them are a lot more straight, we want to have the same DNA across every letter. Okay. Now, the last word is yummy. So let's go with the ballpoint pen and do this shapes again. Okay, so we'll start with the same movements as letter V. Up, over, turn, and down. And from here all the way down, loop. And now the upper stroke becomes the ligature to the next letter form, and we have to be mindful of the spacing. Letter U, we have two M's, so a uh, challenge. And a second letter Y. Okay, so going down along the centers, exit. Okay, things I'm looking at in here is that I want to look at these loops and try to be as consistent as possible because I'm designing the entire alphabet. If I was going to design a logo tab in here, many things will be different. Um, 
because I will be looking at creating an image out of a, out of a word. So I will try to make every letter to have a really strong personality. But in this case, we are not looking at the logotype, we are looking at calligraphy. So we want to design every letter of the alphabet with the same DNA. So I'm looking for consistency in terms of shapes, in terms of widths, and in terms of spacing. Okay. Um, if I think about all the movements I did and where can I stop, I can clearly see that I could stop at the top of my Y if I wanted to, then at the top of my first U, second part of the U, bottom of the M, second arch of the M, and then all the way here, here, and here, and exit. So there are many places that we could stop if we want to um, control the shapes and control the semantics and the spacing. So I hope these points are helpful for you to understand that you don't have to stop in all these areas, but you could and then keep going, making the letter form at the end completely connected and invisible, making the stops invisible, basically. So let's do the thing and fix. Okay. Um, all right. So starting with the same movement as letter B. One millimeter to the right, and I'm going all the way. First loop, and be mindful when you go up in looking at the space inside and the space in between being as consistent as possible. Now, I run out of ink because I didn't stop enough in the middle of the word. So I have to um, All right. Now I can clearly see in here there is too much ink because I stopped right in the middle. But I can look at this and self-evaluate my exercise and think, okay, how can I improve this letter form? So I see in here, I nearly run out of ink in the middle of the M. So this uh, down stroke is thicker. Uh, in terms of widths, I'm pretty happy looking at the space inside and in between and looking at how the M's are quite consistent between each other also the loops, quite similar to each other. What happens inside on both Y's is very similar. Okay, so these type of accidents are gonna happen a lot. Um, and you can always try to do it for the second time and then compare what happens because uh, it's rare that in one word, you are not going to have any tiny mis, um, mistakes or accidents. I'm gonna do it right at the bottom to compare. So that's my exercise. Okay, let's do it again and compare. I'm going up, thin, and around. One millimeter to the right and press and release to create the loop. One millimeter to the right, letter U. Double turn. First part of the M. Second part of the first M.
You can see the stops I'm making it. I feel I'm running out of ink, so I'm gonna try not to make the same mistake again. So I'm grabbing the ink right now before going down. So from here, I'm going one millimeter to the right and press down, thin, going around, exit. Okay, I'm a little bit happier with this exercise because I didn't run out of ink. I didn't have, um, I didn't apply more pressure on this area of the end. And I'm happy with the consistency that I have with my M's and the spacing, the loops are quite similar. Okay, so yes. Okay, so we have, let's go outside. And this is what we have for today. Tint, wound, pan, coconut, and yummy. Five more words with the letter forms I explained in the first uh, three videos of this introduction to copper plate calligraphy for beginners. I hope this was helpful. And leave me a comment on this video if you have any feedback, please. Thank you very much.